thought I'd start this video at the end showing you the completed product of two Curry EZIP batteries that now have lithium ion batteries instead of the lead acid that they came with. And then I thought I'd work backwards just like they did in Sunset Boulevard where William Holden wonders, how did I get here? Maybe you'd like to hear the facts, the whole truth. If so, you've come to the right part. You see, the body of a young man was found floating in the pool of her mansion, with two shots in his back and one in his stomach. Nobody important, really. just a movie writer with a couple of B pictures to his mind. The poor dope boy. He always wanted to pool. Well, in the end, he got himself a pool. Only the price turned out to be a little high. Okay, I'm going to try to explain what I'm doing in converting the lead acid batteries that are sitting inside the box for the EZIP and maybe with the schematic explain it a little simpler as to what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to take these lead acid batteries out of there and replace them with these lithium ion batteries. So here is a schematic of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Let's see if I can explain this so it makes some sense here. You start off, you've got the two screws in the bottom of the EZIP battery box. You can see the red and the black there. And they are attached to those brass buttons there that connect with the EZIP bicycle. But you're going to have to cut out quite a bit in order to fit those batteries, those lithium ion batteries, in there. First off, this has to go. That is up too high. This is a very, very tight fit for everything here, and that has to go. And the corresponding ones over here are also going to have to go. You're going to have to cut, grind that out right there to give some space for some wires. And you're going to have to cut a hole in the back, back here, for the balance wires to come out and put a plug in there instead hold that. So let's talk about the schematic. Start at the red. We're going to solder to, solder to that positive end right there, which is what that represents. And that's going to go over and that's going to hook to the top of the fuse. The way that the E-zip comes is that the fuse is on the negative side. We're going to swap that around because the red wire is closest to the fuse. It made no sense to crisscross the black and the red. So the red wire, we're going to snip that off and we're going to connect it to the tip of the fuse right there. And that is what that represents right there. Going to put two wires on that screw connection right there. Put two ring terminals on with red wire. One is going to go to the outside of the fuse holder. That's the fuse holder. Go to the outside fuse holder. The other one is going to go in a trough all the way up and connect into the red of the charger port right there. Now the trough is that trough right there. We're going to hook a red wire, we're going to go up that trough, we're going to come out, we're going to hook to the red wire right there. That's for our charger to come back in through the fuse, come out and go to the positive terminal of the little brick here we've got of 16 cells that are soldered together. And one of the reasons that I use 14 gauge solid wire and 
put it in an oval is it gives it structural rigidity such that you don't really need the hot melt glue or the other things like that. It's one of the advantages of that. So that is pretty much the red wire on that and that's how the fuse holder is going to be connected. The black wire that is connected over here we're going to turn that wire. We're going to actually grind out through here to allow that wire to come down and drop into this trough. It's going to make a couple connections. It's going to connect to the black wire, the charging point. It's also going to go through here. We're going to have to grind that out right there. Stick the black wire and a red wire through there. Drill through that. Come out of here. And that is going to connect to a brick that you're going to see that is located on the back of the EZIT bicycle. So the one that's in the plastic box, and let me show you the plastic box. This plastic box, I found this, Systema from New Zealand. And what does that say? 33.8 ounces. But if you take this lid off, I thought this was, and you can put two of these in here because I've got two E Zip batteries that I'm going to hook up on the back of the E Zip. And they fit in there pretty good. Snap that in. I got a little piece of wood I'm going to put in here, and plus you got your XT60 connectors. But you do that, you keep it from slopping around in there. And that is a pretty nice little holder there for five bucks for that. So that's what I came up with in order to hold the extra batteries in order to get seven cells in series. You can only get six cells in series inside that case using this style of battery. Put those in there. And then you got space for one more. So three go in here and three go in here. And you'll see all this in just a second. So the three black wires. You got your black wire from here that comes up, goes in, goes underneath the wire nut, which is what that represents is the wire nut. The wire that comes out to the XT60 uh, and the wire that goes to the charger right there. The black, the black wire of the charger. The balance wires are going to be on the positives of that so that the first battery cell you see that says negative right there well that's like that which means you've got to attach uh, the yellow wire the way I've got this set up if you remember from my last video is black which is the minus the negative then yellow green blue white brown red those are the colors of the balance wires so first set of cells go that way on the positive end there the yellow wire hooks to that and that goes in that trough right there so that's what this is representing is the trough that all these wires have to run into first comes the yellow wire then comes the green wire then comes the blue wire then the white wire, which I had to represent by this real light blue, because obviously it's kind of white against white. Then the brown wire, and lastly, the red wire right there. And that hooks into the JST-XH, such that the 7654321, that is your negative, and that is your positive right there. That goes into the IMAX B6. And that's how you balance charge it with an adapter that is going to go into 
the opposite side of that plug. Which is, see if we can flip it here. That right there. The old charger plug that used to go to the, um, the lead acid battery charger. Now we've got to hook that up to the IMAX B6, and I'll show you the adapter in a later video. So, so I wanted to take the time to show the schematic so that you could refer back to it. There's my little yellow wire nut where those three black wires are going to go into. So you start off with 4 volts, then you go to 8 volts on number 2, 12 volts on number 3, 16 volts on number 4, 20 volts on number 5, 24 volts on number 6, and 28 volts on number 7. So when you see the rest of this video, you can refer back to this, and hopefully that will help you out in understanding why this is wired this way. Is section here that you have to grind out and there's a section back here back in here that you have to grind out to make room for the red wire that is going to go on top here goes on top there and comes over it is so tight that you actually have to grind out the wings of that to make room for that so everything's a real tight fit as you'll see but the end result works pretty darn good so if you're converting an old style e-zip lead acid battery pack to lithium ion these are the steps that I discovered I had to do in order to make it all fit in there and uh, it worked out really well